getting into this hour, we're looking at um, what's happening with the climate. <laughs> And we're looking at conversations that are very necessary uh, to be had as we're getting into a very near future, literally next month. What happens? Um, this year, there was a lot of rain. It went beyond rain and it was flooding. And the entire country essentially was inundated with copious amounts of water. And many said things should have been done. And now we are getting to the place again where we're saying it's drying up and things should be done. Two guests join us this hour as we get into that conversation. Dr. Philip Omondi is a project manager, weather and climate information services. Dr. Terry, good morning. Morning. As well as Dr. Maslin Gudoshava is a climate modeling expert with ICPAC. And you're going to ask me what ICPAC is and I will tell you, uh, maybe she will tell you. But uh, as we get into that, it is... Um, a regional center but she'll give us more information about that daktari good morning to you good morning to you too karibu sana to the hot seats of the situation room um it is a hot topic so let's get into it proper and as we do that ct is going to welcome us with welcome you to the room with a proverb two yes. things as he tells us the proverb then you can tell us what you think about it and how you interpret that yes uh, we for the last uh, three weeks since the fourth week we've been looking at uh, countries in Africa that are landlocked. And we ask this of our guests, just to mention one la landlocked country, so long as it's not Uganda, Rwanda, or Burundi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will uh, mention Zambia. <laughs> <laughs> they <Very good. laughs> Zimbabwe. <laughs> so you, they kind of like had a foot in the door anyway. Mm. These are climate, yeah. environment, yeah. land people. No, they watch the show. <laughs> 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 nice one. So yeah, yeah. Let's go with that. They, so they came right. prepared. They said, ah, that guy, I'm going to try and ask her this question. That's we are ready for you. <laughs> Zed and Zed, yes. We are in the Republic of Chad. The country has 200 ethnic groups. How many? 200. Yep, yep, yep. And it is the fifth largest country in Africa. 20th largest nation. Yes, by the surface area in the world. Mm. Uh, the question that will be asked by somebody, okay, so we're in Kenya and where are we? What is our number? Well, be happy, you're 23rd. There are 54 countries. You're not the smallest. The smallest is actually Seychelles. Okay? Mm. So we're not doing too badly. Now, the proverb. <clears throat> Arrogance burnt the chief's compound. Arrogance burnt the chief's compound. Mm -hmm. Dr. Omondi, what do you think about that? What does it mean to you? Arrogance burnt the chief house. Compound. Compound. Well, uh, I would say if you are uh, arrogant, you are calling for yourself uh, problems. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so to me, I think it means kind of like you should be someone who's willing to listen to others and take advice. Mm. Yeah. Be willing to listen and take advice or if you're going to your own downfall, if you don't. Yes. Huh. She's come from many things <laughs> happening. Do you guys feel what I yeah, you know, shared earlier? Yes. They're, yes. they're leaning towards mm. your mm. own... Mm. Building barriers. Okay, mm. Anki. So you get it? Okay. Yes, ah, we, nice. we, we, we get it. We get it. <laughs> Anki, you are justified. Thank you. Completely. Yeah. Completely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. She had given a, a, a descriptive you know, interpretation which is very similar to the one the two of you have given. <laughs> and so now she's been... She's been um, yes. Uh, it's okay. You're in good company. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, Let's get into this. Again, coming off the backdrop of what's been happening, um, when we look at climate change, when we look at climate situations, when we look at the climate uh, situation in the country, unprecedented flooding took place in this country between the months of March uh, towards you know mid-May. Um, and then it kind of all dried up. We saw, saw some rain um, then in the middle of it. And then we're getting into what is inadvertently going to be a dry spell. Um, but before we do that, I want to start off with ICPAC, um, Dr. Maslin. What is ICPAC and what exactly does it do? 
Um, so ICPAC, so the name in full for mm -hmm. those who might not be aware, mm -hmm. is the IGAT Climate Prediction and Application Center. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is one of the specialized institutions of IGAT. Mm -hmm. So there are quite a number and we are one of them. Uh, we are headquartered here in Kenya. Um, we are also like a regional climate center uh, specialized for WMO. We are a designated center for WMO. Mm -hmm. And uh, we provide climate services to 11 countries. So IGAT focuses on eight countries, but we also extend our services to Rwanda, Burundi, and also Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And we focus on different aspects. Uh, so we focus on climate services, so where we are doing the monitoring and then the forecasting. And we do this for different time scales. So when there's a tropical cyclone, we also issue out warnings. Yeah. And then we also issue out weekly forecasts, monthly, seasonal. And then we also have climate change information. Uh, we also have different divisions like uh, the disaster risk management, the water, the food security and nutrition. We also have climate change. Uh, we also focus also on capacity building of our member states. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just for again, for purposes of clarification, EGAD is the Intergovernmental Authority on Development. Yes. Right. Okay. And so um, before we get now into it proper, Dr. Mondi, um, when we look at um, exactly what you do then with climate services, um, just give us a little bit of insight into uh, what the Weather and Climate Information Service does provide regionally in the country. Thank you. Thank uh you. My colleague has stated uh, what we do, mm. uh, but I want to say that uh, we are a specialized institution mm. recognized by the World Meteorological Organization. Mm -hmm. This is the UN body that uh, uh, checks uh, on balances on all weather issues the globally. Mm. So we are accredited, and by the way, there are not many. Mm. Yeah, we are the only accredited regional climate center of excellence in Africa. We have ACMAD. Uh, that is in Niami, that is serving the whole continent. Mm -hmm. So before you become a regional center of excellence accredited by the World Meteorological Organizations, you have to pass some standards. Yeah. So we went through sometimes back in 2015, 2016, and we are one of the uh, excellent centers. Okay. So coming back to uh, the question that uh, you asked, we know that uh, weather and climate information services, for you to get an information for whether you need data, not many people can access data. You can have a data there, but it is, does not talk to you. So our work is to collect data or get data from member countries that we serve. We unpack that data. It's a lot of information. So you analyze it. After analyzing it, it will be able to speak to you, tell you uh, what is expected in terms of weather. So that is what we call information. So that information that we get from the data that is uh, has been collected for many, many years. The more years you have, the better, the more informative. Mm -hmm. So we use that one to inform uh, the population, the communities, the people that are affected. And by the way, uh, weather cuts across all sectors. Mm. So our work is to unpack this information, disseminate it or give it out to users in a manner that uh, they can manipulate, they can use it and uh, apply it. Who are the users? Are we talking about governments, mm -hmm. organizations? Who are the users? Nearly, you are a user, okay. government a user, mm -hmm. agriculture, that my grandmother in the village is a user, right. uh, the oceans, <laughs> so across. Okay. Yeah. So, as we're getting into it now, we're getting into a September, October dry spell. It's coming. Or I could be saying my own things. What exactly is the situation right now and what are we headed for? Dr. Tari Marceline. Okay, so in the upcoming season, uh, so talking of uh, the whole region in general, what we see is that the Eastern Horn is likely to experience drier than usual conditions. So we are looking at southern Ethiopia, Somalia, also parts of Kenya, the northern and eastern parts of Kenya, and then we are also looking at Tanzania. So in these regions, we're expecting drier than usual conditions. And I think to also make matters worse, we are also expecting warmer than usual conditions uh, over those areas. And then looking at the western parts of the region, what we're expecting is um, 
wetter than usual conditions and then in general we are also expecting warmer than usual conditions mm. yes if i were to ask a layman's question mm -hmm. uh, how do i differentiate between weather and climate what is weather and what is climate okay so weather is what is happening now and then climate is what you aggregate over a longer period of time okay so it's cold that's weather yes yeah. <laughs> If I'm expecting it to be hot now, that's climate. Uh, <laughs> not now, but mm. over, like now we are saying uh, the coming season, mm. June, July, August, then you are now talking of climate. But if you are talking of weather today, tomorrow, what, how does it look like? Mm. Okay, <laughs> now, which gets me to ask a question. Um, how accurate mm -hmm. is the data that mm -hmm. you consume? and how accurate is the information that you put forth okay maybe i can help my colleague mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> how accurate okay uh one thing that uh, we must appreciate is that uh, data is an issue mm -hmm. even if i ask you that about your health mm. you say oh but why so the same way data why, why, why don't you ask me <laughs> 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 data is a critical for us Africans. We value data. Yeah. So the little data that we have, yeah. before we tell the public about what the data is telling us, mm -hmm. we have to perform uh, what we call, we, we, we check. We do quality, we check. And to some extent, when it is beyond a certain threshold, it is good enough for us to, uh, to give it out. So to answer your question, it depends on where. We have a very okay. uh, uh, sparse network of data, okay. but with the little that we have, there are some scientific uh, way that we use it. Okay. To give them, uh, Allow me to get specific and be a uh, speak as a lay person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if I want to know where the wind is blowing, I lick my finger and put up my hand like that. <laughs> then, if I feel cold, I know exactly where the wind is coming oh, wow. from. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. uh, my grandmother could feel her back itching, and she would tell me it is going to rain. Exactly. She had a scar on her back. She had several. These were incisions that, in her time, were indication that somebody had tried to heal her of something. And it would reach the point where we would actually be asked to scratch it for her. Okay? And oddly enough, it would rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oddly enough. Many of the occasions it would rain. Many occasions it didn't rain on that day, but it rained later. What are the indicators that one uses? I'm asking this as a layperson because every time we hear of the weather, individuals telling us about the weather. Mm -hmm. And I like what you started. A southern tip of Eastern Horn. Horn, yes. Mm. And then <laughs> we make we even make fun of it. And then it westerly know. winds that the, fly over the eastern the, lowlands. The southern lowlands. And then we're thinking okay. the leeward. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and we're thinking, right, very good. <laughs> this information how is it gathered in as simple a manner as possible and what is it that we look at to give us the indication of what is going to happen you see what's happening today i live in today so i can see but what concerns us usually is like when is the dry season beginning when is it likely to really rain so that we can't control it that sort of thing because it affects us enormously and even as your response allow me to pick this you know mm -hmm. the words of kofi annan because mm -hmm. it's very interesting what he said about climate then mm -hmm. and i know you have also you know spoken on it right now and he said on climate change we often don't fully appreciate that uh, it is a problem. We think it is a problem waiting to happen. These are the words of Kofi Annan on, mm. on climate. Are we going a bit, uh, you know, wrong about what we expect as far as climate change and warning? Are we, is it a problem we are anticipating to happen when we should actually look at it as a problem? Okay, let me uh, put uh, facts here straight. You know, <coughs> before I come to data, mm -hmm. we need to understand because uh, it has not come out clearly. We have what we call seasons. Mm -hmm. In our region, let me talk about Kenya. Mm -hmm. We have uh, three seasons. When we talk about season for us, it is when we have uh, rains, mm -hmm. and when we are uh, so we, we uh, from January we start from March, April, and May. That is our first major rainfall season. Then second one we have uh, June, July, mm -hmm. August. That is our second and dry of mm -hmm. what we have gone through, and it's sometimes called in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Then we have October, November, December. So as a climate scientists, our focus is, uh, uh, is on those seasons. Mm -hmm. We want to tell the general public about what will happen in our coming seasons. Mm -hmm. That's why as an, uh, a center, a specialized center, we have to do three times in a year. 
the March, April, May, we do focus in uh, f- February. Mm-hmm. Then we tell uh, the end users. Okay. The ma- uh, June, July, August in May. Then October, November, December, uh, we do in August that we did. We finished yesterday. Mm-hmm. So when you ask a question before I come to data that it is cold, it is dry. Mm-hmm. This is our dry season and cold. Okay. So people are asking, well, how comes uh, we used to get uh, the, the Nairobi gets cold up to July, but now we are in August. That is true. It has spilled over. That mm-hmm. is what we call extreme. And the extreme comes as a result of the climate that has changed. When it has a change, we have excess drought uh, or flooding, excess uh, low temperature like what we have witnessed now. Those are what we call the fingerprints of a climate. So we monitor them and we have that information. Mm-hmm. When I come to the data and the, and the indicators, we have quite a number of indicators as we look at. Prediction is not just peeping through the window and you say, oh, <laughs> it's going to rain. <laughs> it is much, much more than that. Mm. We have at our center, we have a data bank that spans from uh, 1961 to date. So you must do what we call, you look at how they behave uh, through some indicators. We have the oceans, which are the center of water that gets into the atmosphere. Then that is what uh, eventually comes down as rainfall when conditions are ripe. Mm-hmm. So we look at oceans, we look at the flow, uh, the, 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 the moving up of winds. We look at uh, so many things, uh, technical jargons that uh, if you get into, you will even confuse the population. Okay. Indian Ocean Diapole, mm-hmm. uh, mm. Quasibiannal Isolation. <coughs> so uh, at our center, we have more than 20 that you can look at before you check and say that it is going to cause weather to play in a certain way. Okay. So that monitoring is critical and this we get from data, which is well prepared post-process and ready for uh, uh, forecasting. Okay, so we've talked about information, we've talked about data, we know what weather and climate do, Mm. that uh, interrelationship uh, between the two. Now, we've also said that uh, as we're going into the next couple of months, that things are likely to be drier, it's likely to be warmer. So then one would have to ask, combining this data and information um, that we have, uh, Dr. Gudashava, what or how do we use that information to plan for these next couple of months where it's going to be drier, where it's going to be warmer? Because in this, on this side of the continent, when we hear those two words, we usually equate that then to drought that affected 23 counties in 2023 to the point whereby almost 12 million people were at risk of starvation. Mm -hmm. So how do we use that information to plan for the future? So maybe let me just start. So we just had a regional climate outlook forum. Mm -hmm. So in this regional climate outlook forum, we had uh, member states uh, from the 11 countries. So what was happening during this time is we were coming up with advisories of what should we do in the coming seasons. Mm -hmm. So we had different people from the different ministries. So talking about the health sector, the agriculture, livestock, disaster risk uh, management, uh, and then we also had the peace and security. So some of these issues that we need to do were discussed in this forum. So like, how do we move forward uh, in this season? What do we need to do for the agricultural sector? So there were advisories that people came up with. So for example, in those areas where we are expecting drier than usual conditions, people are discussing on issues of which type of crops can we plant which Mm -hmm. are more drought tolerant. Mm. And what are some of the actions that we can do in order to avert a crisis for the disaster center? So talking about issues of what are some of the anticipatory actions that we can do so that we don't end up uh, in our food crisis. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting because we're also in the neck of the woods where maize is the be end and end all, uh, be all and end all of everything mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to crop. And it's also one that uh, requires quite some um, water to, um, to, to live, right? Or to grow for then for you to be able to harvest it. Mm-hmm. So to have a conversation about alternative crops for growth in a drier period of time seems to me like a conversation that should have been had years ago as opposed to two months to the thing, isn't it? 
Um, so maybe I can also like uh, go back a bit. Uh, maybe part of the information is like uh, over the productive areas. We can see we are expecting wetter than usual conditions. But as you are also saying, like uh, issues on we should plant this. I think this is a conversation that started uh, long back. Mm -hmm. Uh, people have been discussing this, and I think like right now they have there are quite a number of varieties that are also drought resistant mm -hmm. that have been uh, produced so far. So I think it's a conversation that is continuing and will also keep continuing in light of climate change on how can we actually adapt to such conditions. Perhaps if I'll just you yep. know, shoot one question to Philip because I liked his you know remarks when we began this conversation speaking of you know his grandmother back at home um, and uh, you know those kind of people who are essentially the backbone of agriculture in, in, in the country and speaking of food security I mean we have all these things essentially trickling down to education systems children hardly go to school if they're starved or if the very extreme weathers destroy classrooms infrastructure it is so <coughs> destructive and I like what you have said that ICPAC does uh, to, of course, the centralized meetings with the stakeholders. But I'm more curious about the grandmother back at home. How does this information, you know, reach them? They're not left out because they're the ones who need this information a little more, I, I believe. I, I could be wrong. But I'd like to know that it's not just the stakeholders worldwide that come sit down. Uh, like, of course, I appreciate Kenya having sat with Africa on, you know, in the summit last year. Yeah. But how about my grandmother? How about your grandmother? Mm -hmm. um, do they really get this information um, in that clear structure? Is it effective yeah. uh, this far? And have they gotten the warning anyway That's, as we uh, speak? quite profound and uh, really uh, good. Uh, before I answer that, let me say one thing that uh, we are climate scientists. Mm. So when you talk about, uh, for example, the question of uh, variety to plant in a diet player, we don't do that. We work with experts from this, those areas. So when she talks about agriculture, when we are releasing our focus, we sit in a, one room with agriculture experts, mm -hmm. health experts, security experts. So all these people, experts sit with us. So our work is to unpack and help them understand how the situation is going to be climate-wise. Then they use their expertise mm -hmm. now to uh, respond. So we, t we sit with agriculture, uh, and then they go do uh, research and come up with the kind of variety that can thrive in a dry area. And I'm very sorry mm -hmm. to interject, but mm -hmm. real quick, I mean, you do a very good job and you want to ensure that this job you do, you can see the fruits of it. Yes. So I'm sure you just don't sit back and say, well, we did our part. Oh. Like, mm -hmm. of course, I think Elijah and the Bible or Ezekiel. Yes. Um, <laughs> and now it's up to you to use it. Yeah. But I think it would be nice to let us know in your evaluation. Sure. I mean... Do you see that the stakeholders surely do good yes. with this information? Are you satisfied or do we need to call out some of the stakeholders as well <laughs> to give enough support to ICPAC yeah. for the great vision they have? That is uh, uh, correct. Uh, what we do for us to get who is it that is uh, uh, expert in agriculture, security, and we bring them, we pay for them to come mm -hmm. and get the information. They are not sent by their institutions. That is good enough for us. And again, for us, as a regional entity, we have a mandate. But let me uh, say that, uh, how do I reach my grandmother in the village? You know, from data, you unpack, analyze, get information, then from the information, you package it and it disseminate. Mm -hmm. So like in the forum that we were in yesterday, hmm. see, be, being expert with us, and by the way, yesterday's forum uh, resolved that we'll be having farmers nice. in the forum. And we talk to them in a language that they go back and do that. Mm -hmm. So the expert will sit and, uh, and uh, agree with the scientists what that would mean to a farmer in the village. Mm. So this is one agent for a farmer, for example. Agriculture expert goes back to agriculture ministry. Mm -hmm. They are field extension officers. And by the way, from regional level, the focus is downscaled to national. The Kenya Met will sit with the communities, will sit with agriculture at national level. They will unpack and... Uh, zoom it mm -hmm. to see at county at district and location level so from there then we expect that this information that started from the regional center has stickled to the national center the national center taken by the way all of the 47 county directors do attend the downscaling then these directors when they go back to the county they usually have uh, meetings 
I think weekly, mm -hmm. where the chief, the security people are there, the agriculture extension, uh, health, they are also there. The same thing is repeated there. So we uh, expect that this will cascade from national mm -hmm. down to county and beyond the county level. Okay. Dr. Gudushava, as we come into the break, there was some, you know, just sharing in terms of how experts and practitioners are sharing and using this information because isn't that the issue that we had that there may be information and data that has been collected it doesn't trickle down we don't use it we're not talking about uh, drought resistant crops that can be used the information is not being shared how then do we ensure that that happens to ensure again that uh, we don't see the kind of you know suffering that happens because of a drier season um, so just adding on to what Dr. Philip talked about in terms of how that information trickles. So we also have like uh, different initiatives that we undertake. So we also have what is called participatory scenario planning. So this is where we take uh, the climate information down to our local level. So we do this in collaboration with uh, our member states, the NMHs, the National Meteorological and Hydrological Services, so like with KMD. Mm -hmm. So we go down to where people are. And now in this case, so like what you say, do they understand uh, the information the way we have packaged it? Mm -hmm. Most likely not. So we try to kind of unpackage it in such a way that someone who is like our grandmother really understands what are we talking about. And the beauty of this one is uh, we also integrate uh, the indigenous knowledge in this focus when we are down on the ground level. Mm -hmm. So that has, that's how some of the things that we do. We also do specifically for agriculture what we call PIXA, which is Participatory Integrated Climate Services for Agriculture. So trying to also get it to the level that people are on the ground also understand. And also maybe adding on something like uh, what uh, Kenya Meteorological Department has also done very well is what you call the barazas. I'm sure you have heard about barazas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where people are actually disseminating also the climate information. Like now it's the start of the rainy season. People gather, they disseminate uh, the information. Mm. Yeah. Talk about gathering data. Let me just ask again. You've mentioned it, mm -hmm. but I'd like a little more clarification. What data actually do you collect from counties, respective departments, and so forth? What is this data that you collect from them, the one which you aggregate, to mm -hmm. now give you this mm -hmm. overview? Okay, so for us, we don't, uh, like, wh who gives us the data are the MET services. So, like, for example, KMD. So, they collect the data. So, the data includes, like, rainfall data, temperature data. Mm -hmm. So they send it to us so that when we produce our focus, we can also have this data to improve what uh, the global models are giving us. Okay. What do you use to collect this data? For instance, mm -hmm. rainfall, I am of the view, mm -hmm. and learned view, that there must be some technology you use for collecting rainfall all over the place so that you have an idea that this is the amount of rain we've had. Mm -hmm. And then that leads to the question of Okay, uh, how accurate is that measure and what sort of sample size do you need mm -hmm. in order to mm -hmm. be able to uh, state with certainty that this information that we're giving you uh, uh, represents the truth or represents the reality? Yeah. Um, let me say that uh, we are a regional center. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we work, we have an agreement, a protocol why we establish here that we work with the Kenya, uh, the, the med services of all the 11 countries. So their work is to collect data. You yes. know that Kenya has got uh, quite a number of collection points. Yes. Their centers. Mm -hmm. Centers. Yes. Even when you, I think when you're in primary, long mm -hmm. time ago when things were still good, mm -hmm. we had a uh, rain gauge. <laughs> yes. <We> yeah, <laughs> exactly. We did. We <laughs> I was did. going to say that. We, yeah. we actually made it in the science class. Yes. Thank you for So that opinion. one is yes. happening. Yes. <laughs> All over. Yes. So we work with them such a way that they send that data to our center. Mm -hmm. Because we have sophisticated uh, uh, computers, we have models, as you had my colleagues saying, we get that data and bring the technology globally. You know, our center is connected globally mm -hmm. with the advanced centers like UK, Japan. So with that, we have a, super, a, a very powerful computer in our center where this data uh, is analyzed. But the collection is done at country level 
our work is to post process you know when you are given a data before you use it for analysis you must check uh, the validity of that data of course there are also gaps sometimes maybe an instrument broke down it was all collected. so our work is to make it uh, completely full so that we are able to analyze and get uh, accurate information so mm. the collection of data is done by agents uh, then uh, they also do the same at their level okay. but i want to say something that my colleague said mm -hmm. you know sometimes uh, there could be seen to be a conflict of interest our work mandate is regional all right. But when she talks about uh, peace, uh, participatory scenario planning, we as a regional center, we educate and capacity build our national counterparts so that they do the same to county and community. We are not supposed to leave IGAD regional body and go and work with the family in the village. But we have people we work with that do the same. So our work is to get funds, train and we give them that to go to the ground. So many times, uh, the issue that comes up is the response. T several people died because of flood. How comes that you did not tell us this? So our work as a center is early warning. There is what we call early warning and early action. Right. So the response is not our mandate, but we work with the governments and advise them so that they respond. So if you see some of these things that are happening, it is not that the people did not know. It was known, but the response was either slow or was not done at all. Mm. Otherwise, data that we use before you use it, it is of quality. And when we talked about WMO, World Meteorological Organization, mm -hmm. their work to is ensure standards. And before we are accredited, they are, must have seen that the products that we give, the data space that we use is of quality. So mm. I want to assure you that the credibility of data that we use is uh, of, of, of importance and gives us information. You mentioned barazas, mm -hmm. where information is disseminated. Do you have forums where you also get feedback as to how worthwhile and useful the information that was disseminated was? Yes, so definitely monitoring and evaluation is a mm. very important part in any system. So we do get feedback. So uh, most of the times we get feedback from the member states on how they actually used the forecast information that we gave them and what were the impacts. And then we also do disseminate surveys where we are asking, like, uh, given this information, how did you use it? What are still some of the gaps that you want us to fill? And where, which areas do you want us to improve on? So even in the past two days, we did surveys to get feedback on what we are doing. All right, I'm, I'm curious, and I like that Ndu, you know, spoke to this before we took the break, because it's as simple as, I like how CT puts it, like layman's question. Or, uh, so what are the warning signs right now? What is the climatic trend right now um, until June? Like, literally, the question would be, so which is the warning this morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just as I said in the beginning, we give warning as per the season. Right. right now we are in August. Mm -hmm. Our season mm -hmm. that is almost ending was June, mm -hmm. July, August. So we gave a focus for this, which we have seen come to pass. We, we, we now uh, see it is very cold, yet we are expecting that we should be having uh, sun and warm temperatures. So, as I said earlier, these are the extended yeah, anomalies. We say extreme events. Mm -hmm. So, under normal circumstances, you have what we call the normal. But when it goes beyond the normal that is known, uh, that is now when we talk about uh, extreme. So, the focus for June, July, August, we gave in May. Mm -hmm. It has come to pass yesterday. We just gave issued one that is going to open in October, November, December. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what my colleague had, uh, had, uh, had given us. Okay, so what do we expect to see? <clears throat> what do we expect to see? Because if we look at what happened last year, 2023, mm -hmm. and it, because it was a big, it was a big, it was a big deal that we saw that there was livestock that was lost. I mean, we're talking about in the thousands. We saw that people were on the verge. I mean, were on the verge of starvation, and we had to see the place where there was government intervention and there was external partner intervention to see that then food, literally food, was brought in to feed people mm -hmm. because the earth would then not be able to deliver in terms of food for people to eat. So what will we see in this instant? And can we say that the interventions that are already being put in place will guarantee that we will not have 23 million people at risk, that we will not have uh, rather 12 million people at risk or 23 counties at risk of you know, teetering on the, on the precipice of, of this starvation uh, again? 
can we can we guarantee that so maybe just to take you back so um when we first like uh, high food insecurity levels so that was uh extended period of dry uh period. so we had a drought from 2020 October 2020 mm -hmm. all the way to sometime in February 2023 mm -hmm. so you can see that was quite a long period of time mm -hmm. when people were not actually harvesting but in this case we are just uh, getting into a uh, start of maybe dry conditions but as I was saying um, people are working towards preventing these disasters so I'm not sure if you have heard about uh, Kenya just launched um, their roadmap for anticipatory action. So in this case, it's more of you are trying to prevent these disasters before they happen. Mm -hmm. Instead of responding to mm -hmm. the disasters, you are trying to say before this disaster happens, what can we do? so that people don't suffer, so mm -hmm. that we don't have the high food insecurity mm -hmm. levels that we are having mm -hmm. over the region. Okay. And if I just, just, wait, yes, yes. just to add, uh, every forecast that is given is normally accompanied by response measures and contingency plans. So the people I talked to of that attend the forum uh, go back, work with the government, and also do a national contingency plan. So the contingency plan is where the government is supposed to know, oh, well, the drought is coming. It's going to be dry. Uh, harvest is not going to be good. So they start preposing uh, of uh, food items so that people, when it gets to extreme, uh, people get it. Mm. So where we then disconnect sometimes comes in is where the response comes in. Mm -hmm. mm. Early warning is given, but somebody somewhere fails to respond uh, positively. And what then we are okay. What should the response be? When yes. we hear that it's going to be dry between now and what should the response be? Start gathering food? And how soon should this warning come in place? Because from what you said from that question that CT asked, it's possible to be, to be, um, what's the word that you used? It, it's possible for you to be accurate yeah. in terms mm -hmm. of what is going to happen mm -hmm. sometime in advance, right? Um, so if we can deal with accuracy, then we should be able to respond with accuracy right so how long should i have if you say to me in january mm -hmm. that between june and august it's going to be dry yes. what should my response be yeah you are uh, we expect governments who are custodian of the food reserves mm -hmm. who knows the population the counties that are going to be affected to know what to give so it depends on how the government works so we say it's going to be an extended uh, uh, dry spell yes harvest is going to be poor, they look at their store, they reserve. If they know that in a month, in a year, we consume this, and the drought is going to go for six months, it is up to them now as experts mm -hmm. to plan properly. Can import, can get from other areas mm -hmm. that had good harvest to the other countries that uh, had a poor harvest. So mm -hmm. all this, now we leave it to the national government uh, to work on. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate what you're doing, in fact. I, I really appreciate that. And what could be disheartening, <laughs> you know, at this point is... You know, remember last time when we had floods and we had a dryer's conversation to dry our maize? Mm. And there was, you know, some sort of miscommunication on whether the floods are coming or not. And then whether the dryers were bought or not. I'm just adding to the, you know, to the point that we expect action. And when Philip said somebody somewhere, <laughs> <laughs> you know, is letting this whole system down. Maybe we should call that someone in the room next time with Ekpak. Oh, we yeah. will. Mm. Yeah, so, so that they really understand that they're letting That's down a person. whole mm. uh, visionary mm. organization. Mm. But then or consider, plus a population. But, but consider also there's something interesting here. Because when we talk about climate change, the discussion here is about the center not holding and what was normal is now no longer normal. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So this anomaly, when it becomes normal, See, the problem, again, is those who are supposed to respond to these changes may not respond appropriately. That's why I asked the question, what, what happens after information is disseminated? Because human beings are what and who they are. They will do what they're used to doing. Mm -hmm. You will tell them. You will explain. They'll look and they'll say, okay, uh, we've heard you, but, you know, this, uh, we, this is how we normally do our things. Mm -hmm. okay. And then disaster strikes, because it will strike. Right. And the question is, in the time you've disseminated information, uh, have you come up with an understanding as to how often you need to pass on this information before it takes root? Because 
people don't change that easily mm-hmm. one disaster will not change them they'll think ah, that was this time next time will be different yeah yes it's a a, a whole uh, kind of uh, a game changer you have to change mindset you know mm. yes mm-hmm. when we give information you know as i said our mandate everybody has a mandate mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and people are very careful that you don't go into their mandates mm-hmm. so ours is early action once you've given early action our work is to make sure that uh, it goes down trickle down to the village as we had said but before we give the next one we do evaluation we ask ourselves the with the information we gave did it come as we gave it so before we give any uh, the second uh, the, the following focus we must evaluate and tell people we it was 80% accurate mm. 90% or 50% then after doing that then we say what is it that we did not do right particularly those who are now given the focus what is it that you did well what didn't you do well and why did this disaster uh, uh, bring this number of lives uh, lo- uh, well, this lo- number of lives uh, that uh, uh, were lost so it is a, a, a game that we do by a number of people it's not only us so we have health we have agriculture so everybody has to say what did you do and what didn't you do right mm-hmm. so it being a learning experience people should learn that this was given we never acted next time when it is given we are supposed to act mm-hmm. so it is not a one man or a one institution uh, mandate or show we are working with quite a number of people right from un agencies ngos private sectors governments and even communities so you may do your part somebody may have not done his or her part well the blame will be on them dr mm. maslin how would you know if this coordination then was harmonic that, mm. uh, harmonized rather that uh, everybody doing their part what would we see for us to know that yes information trickling down data gathered information collected now being used in a proper manner that the experts are you know disseminating it and that those who are the end users are picking it up and then you know h- how what would we see and say ah yeah actually this thing is working it's working right So I think it goes to what he was asking issues of uptake um how are people uptaking the climate information so I think uh one of the issues that you see is people talking about it so one that's one of the things people normally talk about this is not forecast what did this is not forecast say and some of the decisions that they actually did take based on what this is not forecast uh said So you actually see like uh, for us like Ikpak also like you are saying mm-hmm. because we are a regional climate center uh we also coordinate what is happening it's mostly coordination of what happens mm-hmm. so in this coordination we also get feedback from these member states uh, so what Philip was talking about we work with uh, representatives from the different ministries so they also report back on what did they say and what did the people do and what were the impacts afterwards so for example what you were talking about um last year when we issued the forecast for enhanced rainfall for october november december mm-hmm. there were efforts actually to mm-hmm. clean up the drains and do a lot of effort so that the flooding impact is not too much mm-hmm. yeah did we have any water you know someone is <laughs> in the comment section saying even now he he is convinced we haven't learned as a country you know brings me to this question how are we doing as a country you know it's good to talk about the regional uh, aspect compared with other countries mm-hmm. i mean let's let's look at this every time we have mm-hmm. indexes that we look at mm-hmm. perhaps if i could have a good morning mm-hmm. um you'll tell me kenya is doing well we're responding well philip um the meteorological department is responsive um the people the farmers generally uh, you know rank kenya in as far as uh, you know response is concerned and preparedness to this point 2024 i mean 2024 march april may mm. uh, okay kenya is one of the the the, the most advanced countries in terms of uh, data uh, and in terms of also Uh, services uh, climate inform services so over the 11 countries uh, Tanzania is uh, doing much better Ethiopia mm-hmm. Kenya so in terms of response uh, the same because uh, it also depends on the government's effort uh, in response to the early action that uh, early information that we give so Kenya is doing well mm. All right. it's only that this issue of weather climate is everybody's uh, business but 
people don't want to act. They want things to be done to them. Mm. You yeah. know, um, mm. Guy Mark Fasson said, and this is just on a light note, if you really think that the environment is less important than the economy, mm -hmm. try holding your breath while you count your money. <laughs> <laughs> Good place to end on. And I think just important for us to continue to look into matters. It is important. There was too much suffering that happened in the last beat. It's important that we use warning systems like this to actually plan for the future. Thank you for being part of this conversation this morning. Dr. Philip Omondi is a project manager weather and climate information services and dr masilini gudoshava is a climate modeling expert with the igad um regional body ICPAC. thank you very much for being part of kenya's biggest conversation till the next time we talk good morning this is the situation room the only way to start your day